So this is the first lecture of the foot and ankle. Um, this is the seventh lecture in the module four folder. This lecture is going to be slightly different. These next three are going to be slightly different. Um, this one's structure, and we got movement, and we got uh, the musculature. And for the hip and knee, because of the the simple nature of those joints, uh, there's not so much going on. But with the foot, it's a it's a complex uh, part of the anatomy, and so it's hard to talk about structure without talking about a little bit of the function. And it's hard to talk about function without a little bit of the muscle. So there'll be a little overlap, but I'll do my best to uh, emphasize uh, structure in this particular <clears throat> video. So the, um, the foot and the ankle is a, is a complex structure. There's a lot going on. There's 26 bones. There's a lot of muscles, a bunch of ligaments. And um, what the foot and ankle has to do is uh, pretty remarkable. Uh, it has to be able to adapt to the surface that it's on. So it's going to be very flexible. Uh, to adapt to like uh, rock or stone or angles and then within seconds milliseconds has to uh, become very rigid so it can push off and so there's no loss of torque or uh, energy uh, efficiency in terms of mobility and movement so quite a bit um, going on in this uh, particular aspect uh, real quick I'm gonna bring your attention to this word intrinsic um, intrinsic and the opposite of it extrinsic these are referring to musculature and uh, basically extrinsic versus intrinsic, um, a lot of muscles, a lot of parts of the foot um, have muscles that originate outside of that. So you'll get a lot of these muscles here that the, the bulk of the musculature is in the, in the lower leg, and then it runs, the tendon shoots down and it has a powerful influence over the foot. So extrinsic muscles originate outside the foot, whereas intrinsic muscles, the muscles that are controlling more the toe and the arch, these um, originate within the foot itself. So the foot, um, <clears throat> here's your uh, top view, here's your bottom view, so more of a dorsal surface and a plantar surface, um, is divided into three regions. You have the forefoot, or the front of the foot, you have this uh, blended midfoot, and then you have a rear foot. And why this becomes really important is that when we start looking at foot function, um, you're gonna start, you're gonna see individual movement of the forefoot moving in the opposite direction of the rear foot and vice versa. And so it's good to understand like forefoot versus rear foot. And then we start talking about function. Uh, we won't go into so much detail, but in the future, talking about forefoot strike versus rear foot strike. But this is basically the toes, right? The, the, the foot itself, the, the metatarsals, and then the phalanges, the toes, and then the arch complex. Right here is the trochlear surface. This is where the tibia and fibula come in and articulate to make the ankle. You can see we have five toes. They're usually referred to as uh, one, two, three, four, and five, the big toe being the first, and then the fifth toe, the fifth digit being the, um, the pinky toe. You can see this more separated out, uh, forefoot um, being more of like the ball of the foot, the midfoot kind of being the arch region, the transition between the forefoot and the rear foot, and then the rear foot being the heel. You see a lateral view here. You can see um, here again the forefoot with the toes and the bulk of the foot and the ankle being more in the rear foot of the heel, right here, the calcaneus, and you can see the tib-fib right there. So that tibia fibula uh, runs all the way up, and we've introduced that a little bit at the proximal end with the, the knee. And unlike the knee where the fibula was influenced by there, not part of the knee joint, you can see down here that the fibula is really a big part of the uh, ankle joint. And um, you know, you have your fibula on the lateral surface, you have this interosseous membrane, and then you have your shin with the tibia, and quite a bit of bony uh, material here on the medial side, not a lot of musculature. Um, we're gonna uh, blow up this uh, detail here, and you'll see uh, this relationship here of how the tib fibula and tibula, now these are two different bones, and they themselves make an articulation. So you have a, a tib-fib joint, you have a distal tib-fib joint, and you have a proximal tib fib joint and uh, movement up here way up here can affect both knee function but can also affect ankle function function particularly the availability of dorsal flexion but um, what happens is you can see you can appreciate that this lateral malleolus and this um, medial malleolus here that how far they come down and they make like a mortise joint uh, with the talus so you can see here this fibula kind of protruding tibia and these two things are fused together, and uh, we look at a woodworking uh, mortise joint, um, very solid joint. The fibula and tibula have that same relationship with the talus. And you can see that articulation here. This is the joint line. This is where the joint capsule would be. This is the 
head of the talus of the actual bone there articulation and you can see that it's a pretty t congruent tight fit um, and you can see how that's coming down here and it the, the tibia and the fibula really encapsulate that talus and you can see here again uh, the majority of the, the mo movements of the of the uh, tarsal joints and then uh, the talus right there and then there's your heel the calcaneus uh, forefoot midfoot and rear foot but the ankle is involved with this whole tibia fibula complex. Again, you kind of see the space there. That's the ankle joint. And so that when we talk about the ankle in most anatomy classes, uh, particularly in the exercise science field, they look at the foot as one functional unit. And they'll really only look at the ankle and that's it. So they look at the ankle. Let me just back up here. Ah, well, anyways. They look at the ankle and they'll neglect the rest of the foot, just assuming that it, it functions appropriately. So like you put your shoe on and you can do some dorsiflexion and plantar flexion and that's about all you need to do. Um, but as we'll tease out here that there's a, the mid tarsal joint, the subtalar joint, um, and then the joints of the first ray and all this can affect performance and particular movement. So <clears throat> like the knee, there's quite a bit of ligaments that support the uh, structure. And in this case as well with the ankle, um, on both the medial and lateral side. Uh, this is the right foot medial view, so the instep of the foot. And what you have here is called the deltoid ligament. Um, this is a really dense network of fibers that are intertwined with each other. And this is so strong that if someone rolls their ankle where they roll with the foot out, which is not the most common way, that the tendon actually stays intact or the ligament stays intact. And you actually get a rupture of the bone here instead. So you have to come in and surgically repair that. Uh, most ankle sprains, uh, before I go that too, you can see how much space is here. Here's your Achilles tendon, there's your heel, and you can see the space here, and this is usually where the uh, there's a little bit of fat pad, there's some fat there to allow for movement, and then your soleus starts in here, and you have all the, the major musculature of the posterior leg. But there's your Achilles tendon, and the Achilles tendon is continuous all the way down around the heel, and it becomes the uh, plantar fascia. So it's continuous with that, con that connective tissue. And then this Achilles tendon goes up the back of the leg, into the hamstring fascia and then arc up that sarcotubulus ligament into the multifidus. So there's a connection between the bottom of your foot and your lower back. <coughs> Here's your lateral view, right foot. And what you can see here are these uh, talofibril and um, calcaneofibril ligaments. So you're looking at the calcaneus and the tail is connecting to the fibula. This is how most people, when they sprain their ankle, they're damaging one of these three ligaments. What's happening is the foot is going into inversion and their, their fibula is coming down towards the floor because of that ankle. And usually because muscular uh, gave out, musculature gave out, and the responsibility is going on the ligaments, the ligaments get extra stretched. And these tend to not damage the bone, but they because they're not as intertwined, they themselves will rupture and, and rip. If they're strained where they're stretched, they become um, loose and create a little extra joint space and more reliance on the musculature for that. <coughs> Here's a uh, superior view looking down. You can see the medial malar oli cut and the lateral uh, from the tibia and then here's from the fibula. There's the talus, the bone, you can see the articular surface and you can see the um, all of the tendons that are coming from the extrinsic muscles that are coming down and encompassing this bone. So there's quite a bit of ankle stability. You, know, you get a lot from the connective tissue and then you're getting a lot from the musculature uh, coming from the extrinsic muscles. So all these tendons, all these muscles are originally up on the tibia or the fibula, and they're coming down and either attaching at the top of the foot or in into the dorsal surface. So the next image is gonna show this talus reflected back. So there's the talus, that was the articular surface, you're pulling it up, and what you're seeing is the subtalus or uh, the articular surface of the subtalar joint. And this is, um, this is the first big joint that comes after the ankle. And this is what allows quite a bit of ankle motion, ankle mobility uh, to occur, and for really a lot of our foot stability. Again, here's your calcaneus, there's your Achilles tendon that's shooting up towards you out of the screen. And you can see the articular surfaces here just a little bit better. These uh, talus joints, uh, tarsal joints, and then the calcaneus here and the talus reflected back. And you can see that there's quite a bit of relationship between the um, two bones here. Right? And this joint here is called the subtalar joint. <coughs> so you have the talus, you have the subtalar joint that's kind of replaced now. You have the 
midfoot, which makes up the mid tarsal, the transverse tarsal joint. And then that's continuous. It's hard to say that this is the start, this is the end, but we look at the midfoot as uh, the kind of the mid tarsal joint collectively. And then you have your tarsal metatarsal joint, and then you have your flexion and extension like you would your fingers here at the toes. But really, we're, we're not going to so much focus on the distal end of the foot, but we're going to focus on the ankle, the subtalar joint, and the uh, mid tarsal joint. From a structural perspective, we have the arches of the foot, and we get a lot of conversation about the arches, and the people will talk a lot about pronated foot, uh, aka a flat foot, or a supinated foot, a high arch. And the reality is, is that at any given moment, your foot's either collapsing with gravity, pronating, flattening out, or it's becoming rigid and supinating, pushing off for force propulsion. So you might have a static posture that tends to be more collapsed or more arched, but pronation and supination are actually part of movements uh, related to normal foot function and not necessarily static positioning. Now what can happen, and we'll show in a little bit over time, is that these arches based on muscular and tendinous and ligament weakness, that these arches tend to flatten out, right? Just like if you stop doing pull-ups or stop doing bench press, your muscles would get weaker, you would lose the shape of the muscle. But in this case, because this is a functional aspect, um, when you lose shoulder strength, you might not notice it, but when you lose foot or ankle strength, because you're standing all every part of the day, uh, it starts to have an adaptive process on the foot itself. The other thing that happens is that we take a lot, we, we really pamper our feet. We wear footwear that uh, don't really provide a lot of need for the foot to do the work. We also walk normally on flat surfaces. So, you know, we're not really having the opportunity to walk outside on the ground, on the grass, even outside walking on concrete. Are, we have these flat surfaces that are meant to um, make things easy. Um, like think what would happen to your leg muscles if you sat in a wheelchair for a long time. It's exactly the same that happens with your foot. When the foot loses its, its demand, it loses its ability to perform. <coughs> but um, what we're inducing here now are the arches of the foot that will collapse. And we'll talk about it from a structural perspective. And then next lecture, we'll talk about it from a muscular perspective. But you have um, this transverse arch that's going across the foot. And then you have this longitudinal arch that's going from the heel and it's uh, shooting out. You have a medial uh, arch and you have a lateral arch. You can kind of see those arches right here. So there's your transverse arch that's making the dome from the first metatarsal to the fifth metatarsal. And then you have this, and this is the transverse arch there. You can kind of see the dome that's creating. And then you have another dome that's running instead of uh, left to right from back to front. And, it's, and it fans out. It originates here at the heel and it goes medially. And then it kind of creates a triangle and goes laterally as well. So you have these two arches really. And then the longitudinal arch has two kind of divisions, but it's really one. It's really better to look at the arch uh, as more like these bowls. So the, um, the uh, longitudinal arch kind of comes down and around and there's a lateral and medial division, but it's really like a dome from the superior view. It's a better view here. You can see the longitudinal arch. Here's the transverse arch kind of going across this way. And then you have the lateral and the medial divisions of the longitudinal arch, transverse arch. Yeah, so it just kind of depicts that, that dome-like effect here this bowl that's coming down that's basically keeping the, the foot uh, ready for action. And this is what it looks like anatomically. So the longitudinal arch kind of starts back here at the calcaneus and it goes all the way up. Let me get my pen going here. So it kind of comes up. And this is the um, medial view here. So this is where your, uh, your big toe is at. And you'll see the um, uh, medial arch there uh, kind of coming up. And then you'll have the exact similar side on the opposite lateral aspect. But it creates, makes this a dome, this bowl. And you can see that it's hollowed out uh, more at the peak here in the middle. And uh, you have this uh, plantar fascia, this connective tissue that's kind of keeping this, keeping this end cl as close to this end. And you can kind of see that if there's too much weight coming down, let me get my arrow, too much weight coming down this way, that's gonna force this to go out that way and this to go out that way. And so this connective tissue right here um, that is rever uh, resisting the collapse of that arch. Now, this is not the only tissue that's doing that. We'll see that some, a lot of the muscles are coming down too, but you get a combined weakness of the connective tissue and the muscle. This is gonna lengthen and you're gonna end up with flat feet. <coughs> so this is a lateral aspect. You can see the lateral view, this, that medial arch we just saw, and that transverse arch coming across there. And again, you can see it integrated with the rest of the bones and you know, a little bit of redundancy here.
but just different ways of looking at those uh, arches in, within the foot. So here you can see the uh, superior, uh, the plantar surface of the, of the foot. You can see the um, peroneus longus coming in and the tibius posterior. You can see these big muscles that are coming from the lower leg. And then you can start seeing some of the intrinsic musculature that's here that support. And again, medial arch, lateral arch, and it's supposed to resist the uh, load of gravity coming down. So this introduces this concept of arch support and, uh, and orthotics. If the um, tissue can't support it, like if this connective tissue can't support that arch, you're going to get a collapse. And that can have a biomechanical consequence to both the joints, the hardware, and the tissue. And so uh, orthotics come into play to help support the arch passively, right? The arch by no way is dynamic, but it's a starting point for some components. And so a lot of people use inserts, orthotics. Uh, in the end, the goal is to strengthen the musculature of the extrinsic and intrinsic so that the arch is no longer needed. So yes, if you haven't used your foot in a while and there's dysfunction, you're going to need to use crutches for a little while. But the game plan isn't to use crutches indefinitely and, um, and adjust the crutches as time goes on. The game plan is to progress out of the crutches so that you don't need them anymore and that your muscles of the foot can take over the function. So the support of the arch comes from both passive and active tissue. Uh, you have quite a bit of ligaments here that are meant to kind of keep everything together. Um, you have different layers of the plantar fascia, but you can see the plantar fascia here. As I said, the plantar fascia is continuous with the Achilles tendon. So it's, it's one of the same in terms of connective tissue. It does anchor here at the calcaneus, but it does pull through there. That's why they recommend stretching of the calves to kind of help with tight plantar fascia, foot arch. And in the end, it's because this guy's being jammed up so much because the muscles are too tired. And it's usually from a heel strike versus a forefoot strike. You can see the plantar fascia here, and you can see a, a, an image of this depicted. It's really dense tissue. I mean, it's really thick. And so that tissue, if, you're, if this tissue is getting irritated and it's getting lengthened, it's it's been there it's going like that for years as it's it's going on but it's not just the connective tissue that's there you also have quite a bit of the musculature and so like i said at the beginning you have these extrinsic muscles that are shooting down their tendons and those tendons also support the arch and support the plantar fascia and then you have multiple layers of the intrinsic muscles that come in here and they, they have other functions within the toes and toe movement but they uh, support the calcaneus and that arch they're really supporting this distance right here. They're preventing this from going too far out and this from going from too far out. And if, if your muscles fatigue, then that means that the plantar fascia, the aponeurosis, becomes the, the, the backup plan. And if that's inflamed, that's, that's, you know, that's a sign of uh, intramuscular weakness of those little uh, the intrinsic muscles. So here are the uh, extrinsic tendons that are coming down to support the arch actively. And then you have your multiple layers of your intrinsic musculature. So then basically arch support becomes a functional component, right? That body weight comes down. This um, through the midfoot, the forefoot wants to move forward anteriorly. The rear foot wants to move posteriorly. And so you have this resistance mechanism of both passive and active tissue. Um, hopefully the muscles are the primary component. And if the muscles are working fine, you're going to have a normal arch, right? If the muscles are not working fine, you're going to end up with a collapsed arch because the body weight came down and it could not resist gravity and your foot will become more flat or pronated. So the arch is a structural component that is supported by connective tissue passively, but a lot of the arch is supported by the musculature and based on what the foot needs to do at the time, right? Um, are you inverting, inverting, and, and that's going to be the, the premise of our next lecture. So that's the end of the introduction to the structure. You know, definitely read pages 287 to 298 to review. Um, this is also a good time to do the visible body uh, anatomy tour of the lower extremity to kind of get acclimated with the muscles. And then um, uh, the next video here will be the uh, movements.